Hey everybody and welcome to another video from Electronic Armory. In this 3D game development video we'll cover UV unwrapping in our level pieces to properly apply materials to them. We'll also cover light maps in this video. So let's get started unwrapping UVs and importing those back into Unreal Engine. Okay so we have our level here opened and if you look at one of the level pieces and if you ever try to apply material to it you might notice that that material is very flat and not what the preview is representing. So what we need to do for this one is unwrap our UVs for this so that we can apply this material onto this surface. Now if you go up here to the UV menu, you can actually look at our different UV channels. Note that there's a zero and a one. So let's take a look at the zero one. And you can see that there's actually nothing in here. And that's the same for channel one as well. And this is why, if we go back to none, this is why our, our wall here actually doesn't have any materials. It's basically just this color spread out onto the surface. So what we need to do is define where on this model that the UVs are going, or excuse me, the material is going to be applied to this surface. And right now we don't have that. So let's set that up in Blender. So we have Blender open now, and this is our animation that we did in previous videos. I'm actually going to switch over to our default here, and I'm going to hide the collider by hitting H, and the armature as well by hitting H and cl after clicking on that. And you can see that this is the level piece that we have in Unreal Engine. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode, so select the mesh, go down to object mode, and select edit mode. All right, so this one is actually going to be a part of a mirror modifier. So if you select the modifiers here on the right, you can see that it has a mirror and it also has that armature because we animated the rising up and down because we made it act like a door. So the mirror modifier, what it's doing is it's taking what's on the left-hand side here and applying it to the right-hand side, which is why we don't see any of those vertices. We just see them on the left-hand side. So what we're gonna do is actually do a very rudimentary UV unwrapping just to show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna go up to UV editing. I'm gonna zoom in on my model again. Hit the T key to get rid of the menu on the side there. All right, and I'm gonna make one more change on here. So this is actually the image editor. I want the UV editor. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom left-hand side. Yours might be in the top left-hand side and just make sure that this window is going to show the UV editor. Okay, so it looks almost exactly the same, but if we go down here, uh, again, your menu might be on the top. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna click new because I wanna make a new UV mapping for this mesh. And we can give it a name. Let's just call it UV underscore map for right now. Doesn't really matter what you name it at the moment. And we can select the generated type to UV grid if you want to. We can always change that later, hit okay. We'll see this kind of very colorful, almost looks like a checkerboard. Okay, and so we're actually gonna take this image and apply it to this mesh here on the right-hand side. And the reason why we choose the grid is because we want to make sure that when we apply it, that our grid is straight up and down and everything kind of applies smoothly. So on the right-hand side here, make sure your mouse is over on this window. Hit the U key on the keyboard and just do a basic unwrap. So you can see that something appeared on the left-hand side, but what I wanna do is I wanna synchronize what I have selected on the right-hand side with what I have on the left-hand side. So if I deselect everything on the right, you can see that it disappeared. And as I select different vertices on the right-hand side, they kind of appear on the right, though you can't see them. If I select a couple at once, you can kind of see where those UVs lie. So in my bottom right hand side, uh, there is a arrow back and forth. Just go ahead and hit that and you'll be able to see all of your UVs that are in this mesh. Okay, so all the vertices I mean. So the vertices you can see when I just did a, a very basic unwrapping, it put everything kind of on top of each other and not in a very organized way. But what does this actually look like when we apply this image on the left to the mesh on the right? So I'm going to hit the Z key on my keyboard and go up to Material Preview. Next, we actually need a material for that. And I don't have a tab up here in order to do my shading. So I'm gonna hit the plus button here, go down to General, and then go down to Shading. And that's going to add a new workspace for me. 
and you can see that we have our mesh here and we have no materials at the moment in order to apply that image that we just created onto this mesh. So there is a checkbox here that says use nodes and by checking that it'll go ahead and use our node editor for our materials. Now we're not going to use this right now for adding materials. We already have materials set up in Unreal. However, if you wanted to, you could do some material editing in Blender and then bake those out as image files to use later. Things such as normal maps, bump maps, and color maps or diffuse maps. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is hit Shift A and we're going to add in that image. So if you go to the search, click on search and just type in image, it'll allow you to add in an image texture. You can move it around and then we're gonna drop this down and then select our UV map. Now when you get objects in here that have way more images, you'll probably wanna name that something unique. So then we're gonna take the color data from that and put it into the base color so that we can see what our image looks like here. All right, and if we kind of zoom around this, you can see on the this side of it that our grid actually goes kind of diagonal. And then when it hits this middle line, it also goes diagonal. And so you kind of see this V shape in, applied here. So if you ever try to unwrap this yourself and then just import it into Unreal Engine, this is what you'll get. And the textures will look kind of messed up. So let's fix that. Let's go back to our UV editing. And instead of just doing a basic unwrap here, what we can do is select all of these UVs in order to unwrap them again. Actually, all the vertices. Hit U and then do Smart UV Project. Hit OK. And this will give you a much cleaner unwrapping. Now what we can see is if I hit three on my keyboard and I can do face select, I, this face right here, I can see there's a little bit of geometry error there. I'll fix that in a second. But you can see that this is going to be applied up uh, to this image. So as I move this part of the UV on the left, you can see that the image that gets wrapped to it is changing as well. Okay, so I'm gonna hit escape to undo that. And in order to fix that, if I hit one to do vertex mode and select this vertice, you can see that the orange kind of goes to the left and to the top, but it doesn't go down even though it should be connected to this line. If I hit G and move this around, you can see that indeed is not, there's actually a vertex under it. So in order to fix that, I'm going to hit A to select all, go down to mesh, go down to merge, and then merge by distance. And if there's any vertices on top of each other, what it'll do is just merge those together. So it merged five vertices for me, so I had a bunch that were over top of each other. Hit G now, and you can see the orange highlighting is connected to all these different edges. And now you can see that that's much better. Okay, so I went into front face mode here just to kind of look at this model. It does have some straight edges now. And we're not gonna get too much more into UV unwrapping. This will get you part of the way there. If you have more complex meshes, then let me know in the comments down below and I'll do a video that's a little bit more advanced. But for right now, this should be good. So I'm going to get out of edit mode and go to object mode. Okay, so this UV does look pretty good, this wrapping. So I think we're ready to export this. I'm gonna go back to my default workflow here and I'm going to turn back on the the collider and the armature so that I can select all of those for export. However, another way you can do is if I deselect everything like that, I can select one of these things, hit shift G and select by group. And in this group I want is everything in the collection. And because I organized it by collection, it'll select the collider, the armature and the mesh itself. I can also do that by right clicking on that and just say select objects. So a really nice way of being able to easily select all of your meshes because we're gonna export that out to Unreal Engine. So file, export, FBX. Okay, I'm gonna go into my FBX folder. I'm going to name it level end cap. It's gonna overwrite the old version. 
and I'm going to export the armature, the mesh, negative Y forward, edge smoothing. We're going to apply that modifier, so we apply the mirror modifier. We're not going to add any leaf bones and only include deform bones. And these are for our animation, we can just keep all of those checked. Limit to selected objects, and we're good to go. Now I did that just because we've covered exporting in previous videos. It's always good to review, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a operator preset and just get hit plus and then just type in Unreal Engine so that we know this export. All these settings will be saved under this preset so we don't have to keep doing those changes. Okay, so I'm going to export that FBX and I'm really only interested in the mesh we haven't changed the animation or the collider, so you might keep that in mind just to make your exports a little bit faster. All right, so now we have our mesh here again, and so what we're going to do is just remember that this wood walnut is applied to it, and when we re-import it, it should fix our UVs. So just in the same folder that our mesh is currently in, we're gonna import that. Okay, select our mesh, hit open, and it's gonna ask us if we wanna overwrite that and we can just hit yes. Okay, so that successfully re-imported it and you can already see that that already has a material applied to it. So let's open that up in our mesh editor and we're looking pretty good, except for what we ended up doing is when we unwrapped it, the top here, the grain of this wood is in the opposite direction of our kind of main part of our wall here. And if we look at the other side, um, that actually does match. So what you would do to fix that is go back into Blender, go to your UV editing. And so it's really hard to tell using this mapping which orientation that these squares are. So if you remember, one of these squares are actually flipped so that the grain is going in the opposite direction. So if we go in, if we select this, go into edit mode, and you can kind of see that this wall here so if I flip this around, hit one of my keyboard just to make sure we are in vertex mode so I can see all the vertices, that if I go ahead and hit three now to select the face, you can see that the face here on the left is selected. This one is selected as well. But I actually don't know if this is oriented properly. So if I ro rotate this on the left here, you can see that it's also rotating the mesh on the right. So in order to fix this, what I'm gonna do is go up to image and then under type, instead of that UV grid, which is great for seeing if any of these are stretched out or different sizes, we can go to our color grid. Okay, and so the color grid will give us an idea of the connected faces and everything. Going back to Unreal, you can see that on this particular side of the wall, the grain is going from left to right, and then on the top, it's going up and down. But on this side, all the grain is going up and down. So let's actually just fix this part of the wall here and just rotate this part so all the grain is going up to match every other part. Now you'd probably have to fix that, but we don't want, we'd be here all day. So let's just fix one thing at a time, and I'll leave that as an exercise for you guys to fix all your UVs. Okay, so I'm gonna flip around here and just make sure that we have our proper face selected. It's on this side. And make sure I select the whole entire face here. So if I just grab this, you can see the different parts here. And we know that the top piece is, the grain is okay there. So I'm just gonna take these parts and I'm gonna rotate it. And you can try to match it up, but if you just hit nine zero on your number pad, that will rotate at 90 degrees. Okay, so we've rotated our UV, so all of our grain should be in the right direction. And again, you'd probably want to select this and also do um, a rotation, not on the right, make sure your mouse is on the left, rotate it, 9, 0. However, what's going, to call it, what's going to happen now is when we import this into Unreal Engine, it's going to complain about our UVs being overlapped. So we can't actually have these UVs overlapping with these UVs. So we'd have to move it to a spot that doesn't have any UVs existing on it. All right, so we wanna make sure in the long run that we have our, our grains 
So if we kind of use these lines as our wood grain, that they would actually match up as it wraps around the model. But again, a little bit more complicated than we want to get into today. So we're going to do one more thing for light maps, and then let's see our results. So I'm going to go to my default workflow here, and I'm just going to delete the annotation that I put in there. All right, and so if we go down to our object data here, we can go under UV maps and just see that we have one UV map and we're going to add the other one for a light map. It doesn't really matter what you call it as long as it is the second channel. And if we go back to our UV editing, and so our light maps are going to actually be very similar to our image that we're UV unwrapping and applying to our mesh. However, this is going to be used by Unreal Engine in order to bake our lighting data to the model. So for instance, if there was like a table in front of this and a light was casting a shadow from the table onto this wall, that is that data, if that table is static, that data will be mapped to our light map. And then the light map will be applied to our UV map or our material in order to make that darker. So that's how light maps work. And we can unwrap that slightly differently, but for the most part, Unreal Engine will actually do that for us. So we can just keep that there. Okay, so I'm going to make sure everything is visible, select everything, make sure everything is selected, and then export it. Okay, we're gonna export as the end cap. We're gonna choose our Unreal Engine presets so we don't have to enter in any of this stuff again, export it, and then import it into Unreal Engine. Okay, so back in Unreal Engine, import, or you can drag it in. overwrite it and our wood grain is now up and down so if we go to UV here we can look at the first channel I guess we still do have a little bit of overlapping here so we can fix that later but then if we go to our light map you can see that Unreal Engine generated this for us but we do have the ability to do a custom light map if we wanted to but this does a pretty good job it leaves enough buffer in between these objects in order to avoid bleed over from the lighting. All right, so I hope you guys found this useful. If you wanna see more videos on 3D game development, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when the next video comes out. And we also have videos on iOS development, Android development, and more. Make sure you leave a comment below if you have any questions, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.